Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Confronting the Workplace Super Karen, A Coworker's Tale. The second story, Betrayed at Work, When Accommodations Turn into Terminations. The third story, Saved by Tesla, Epic Showdown with Entitled Mom Over My Car. The first story is, What do you do when you can't deal with a coworker? We have a newer server at my work. It's a small business, 14 to 15 front of house, only five of us are full time. We manage, serve, and bartend. This new person is a super Karen. She yells our customers from 15 to 20 feet away, who got this? Who has this? When she's in a bad mood, she's up the cook's A and tries it with us bartenders. Don't think so. This weekend, let me copy what I sent to a coworker out of town. She lost her phone at blank on Saturday night. She came in Sunday with no work shoes, rampaging about her phone being stolen. Oh, she was gonna press charges and sue blank because she asked them to pull camera footage. And they refused, and the bartenders were making fun of her and she was banned. All day she was rampaging, doing her normal yelling at customers, treating the cooks like SH going on and on. I said exactly what are you gonna sue blank for? They wouldn't help me. She thought she should ban the bartenders from here. I said absolutely not. They've done nothing worthy of being banned from here. You could tell she was getting frustrated with me. It got old. Victim personality, super Karen. She's yelled at the bartenders for so long that eventually they said, you're insane, you're banned, goodbye. Conversation with the bar. It went down at me. Your friendly blank staff is dying to know what actually went down at blanks last night with him. From what she's saying, she did nothing but make us look bad with a blank work shirt on. Her. Hey, she lost her phone when we were slammed. A customer actually just brought her phone into the bar and said his wife accidentally grabbed her phone. She's more than welcome to come grab it if you can contact her. Me. We want to know if she's still banned, which I think is justifiable. She owes you an apology when she walks in. Her. She was very rude and disrespectful to my other bartender, which is why we asked her to not come back. So I'm going to leave that up to the other bartender to decide. Sad that she works in the industry and acted like that towards another worker, you know? Me. Yeah, all of us over here are embarrassed. I told her she can get her phone and that at the very least she owes you all an apology. She said, but they wouldn't help me. I said not their responsibility, especially during a rush. You know how it is. We don't have time to drop everything and find someone's SH. Her. We did try to help. She asked us to pull credit card receipts and we don't have access to names. And then I told her I would check cameras if she knew when it was taken, and she freaked. But she did just come in and apologize, so no bad blood. Everything's fine. Me. I'm glad she at least apologized. I want to tell her next time she wants to go super Karen on someone to take off her D blank shirt. Blank said she would go super Karen on me next if I did. Her. Ha <laughs> ha, we didn't even notice the blank shirt, so it's all good. Today she posted in our snap group that she had her phone. Long story to tell in person, but F blank. The bar it happened at. Back to my coworker. Me. I called her to tell her that they found her phone. Called on her dad's phone. That she could go get it. I also said you owe them an apology. She said we will see when I get there. I said they did nothing to you. Worse than a two-year-old whining, she said, but they didn't help me. I said, it's not their responsibility to help you. They were busy. It's your responsibility to keep track of your SH. Blank offered to pull the video footage if she knew when it happened. She didn't, because she hadn't just gone to the bathroom like she said. She was out dancing for quite a while. Blank was packed three deep at the bar. You don't leave your SH on the bar and go off and do whatever when they're that busy. I also tried to explain to her, think about when we're super busy. We do not have time to stop everything and search. She said, but they weren't busy. They were just making fun of me. I wonder why. And yes, they were busy. No room at the bar. Stacked three deep. But drop everything and find your phone you aren't responsible enough to own. This is just one example of her drama. I told my coworker if I go to our boss and say I refuse to work with her, she said you'll lose your weekend hours. I said, but I'm the person who likes everyone. You and everyone else tell me to stop being nice to certain people because they keep coming in. If I don't like someone, that's saying a lot. She said it didn't matter. She wasn't going to lose her job because of this. She isn't wrong, both. I don't know whether to go to my boss about stuff that doesn't happen at work, but in our shirts we wear. Our customers don't deserve the way she treats them at our cooks. Definitely don't deserve her SH. How to get her out of here? She is horrible as a server and as a human being. 
Edit. The owners are in Hawaii until Thursday for her cousin's wedding. When she gets back, I'm gonna talk to her. Edit two. I talked to the owner, she was released. The second story is, I told my boss about my disability and they told me to quit or get fired. Hello Reddit, it's been a few months since my boss stabbed me in the back, and although things have settled down, I'm still recovering from what happened. The characters of this story are my boss, or SM, store manager, my supervisor Sam, sales assistant manager, and Laura, supervisor. To begin in February, I was diagnosed with PTSD and reoccurring depression. This was no surprise to me. I've had panic attacks and crippling anxiety for years, and get bad depression every month. Yeah, hormones suck. February was also the six-month review for my retail job, and as most could guess, my anxiety and nerves came up a lot. Job stress was not only destroying my mental health, but my physical health as well. I was getting migraines so strong I couldn't stand, as well as terrible colds that would last weeks. As a result, I felt it was important to be open and honest with my boss about my conditions, and apologize for how it was affecting my job. People pleaser style. Both SM and Sam conveyed their understanding and even shared they both had daughters who had poor mental health, and that they were willing to help and brought up accommodations. Feeling all was well with the world, I spoke with my doctor and therapist, coordinated a date, and began the process. As instructed by policy, I went on unpaid leave while a third-party company handled the paperwork because HIPAA or something. That experience was a whole other can of worms, but I came out stressed and ready to return to work as I had not been paid in a month. On day one of returning, I met with SM and Sam to discuss what my accommodations were, what expectations were, and get everyone on the same page. It's important to note my accommodations were approved by a board of people who believed they were reasonable and believed I would be able to do my job as a cashier. At no point during the process of applying where my accommodations questioned or negotiated. My accommodations included a max of two five to 10 minute breaks a day if I were to recognize a panic attack and need to leave the floor. One to two days a month so I could take off if my anxiety was too high to work that day. Written instructions for unfamiliar tasks. And a dedicated space for feedback. Throughout the meeting, SM kept asking questions trying to really narrow down specifics. However, it came across as very sharp, and not only made me uncomfortable and unsure, but anxious to the point I went nonverbal for a bit. It felt as though SM was taken aback that I would ask for such things and believe them to be very inconvenient, though she couldn't legally say so. The questions were very vague and confusing, and I did not understand what she was getting at. It eventually came out that SM had concerns, but we were going to trial the accommodations to see if they were possible. I left the meeting tired and disoriented, but still giving management the benefit of the doubt. I mean, surely they were going to work with me. I had been a dependable worker for two years. On day four of being back, I was pulled into the office by Sam, and seeing another manager in the corner clued me in that something was up. I was sat down and handed a stack of papers, and told I was being issued two write-ups. This came as a shock as not only had I not been back for long, I had also not been written up before or coached recently. The first was for leaving when I was scheduled to leave, even though I had not finished the task I was given. I had communicated this task could not be completed in the time left in my shift, and made my manager aware that day. The second write-up was for how I sold a warranty on a tool. We're scripted to tell the customer the warranty covers manufacturer problems and general wear and tear. In order to sell more, I usually inform customers, general wear and tear does not mean broken, and they can bring the tool in at the end of the warranty. I was written up for doing so and all questions I asked were shut down, and I was given no plan for coaching or improvement. After I signed the write-ups as instructed, I asked Sam if I was going to be fired, and how many write-ups I had left before that happened. Sam refused to answer the question, gathered the papers and told me I could go home for the day. I left the office in tears. Not only did the write-ups threaten termination in writing, but management was now refusing to speak to me and would not say another word to me in the rest of the time I worked there. I went back for two more days. However, I was so worked up it was difficult to focus. I genuinely believed I was going to get fired at any moment and was given no reason to believe otherwise. Laura and another coworker knew something was up and asked if I was okay, so I let them read my write-ups. They were speechless and disgusted at how incorrect and unprofessional the write-ups were. Laura and the other co-workers then informed me the whole team had been informed I had PTSD and reoccurring depression in all my accommodations. I immediately panicked as I have family in town that can't know of my conditions. I also realized that was why a few co-workers had been ignoring me and making comments about me being lazy or dramatic. This sent me into a mental breakdown. I had multiple panic attacks a day, couldn't get out of bed until I had to, and struggled to eat and take care of myself or keep my apartment clean. I ended up quitting as I saw no future with the company, was being shunned and harassed, and couldn't physically take any more stress. 
On my way out, I took several co-workers with me, as we also found out the creepy co-worker was a registered offender. You're wild. On top of that, I told the district manager and HR everything I knew, and as far as I know, management and creepy guy was fired. It took me a month to recover mentally, and two months of job hunting to find employment. Altogether, though, I still don't trust any management, and don't think I ever will. The third story is... Let me have your $40,000 car. My kid deserves it more than you. For some backstory, I'm a 26-year-old man and my friend is 25 years old, also man. We both live in the USA. I recently bought a 2014 Red Dodge Challenger straight, and I live with my mom. She's the best. On with the story. I live in a small neighborhood, about 20% of the people live there own a muscle car, including me. So one day my mom wants me to go buy some food at the supermarket and I do just that. But I don't want to go alone, so I decide to call my friend if he wanted to go with me, and he said yes. So I go pick him up, and head to the supermarket which is two miles away. When we get there I found a parking spot, and head in the supermarket, we were in there for about one hour. When we were done we both get to the car for the grocery inn, but when we get to the car we saw a woman and her son taking a look at my car. I think nothing of it. I thought they was just checking it out, but man was I wrong. When I opened the trunk to put the grocery in, it was interrupted by none other than EM, and the conversation went like this. EM. Excuse me, is this your car? MF. Yes, it's his car. Me. And do you need anything? EM. Can my son drive it for a bit? Me. What? No. EM. Why? At this point, the EM is starting to raise her voice. Me. Your son's not old enough to drive. EM. No, he is old enough to drive, now give me the key. MF. No, lady. Me. Why would I give you my key? EM. Give me the key, it's not your car. EM. Give me the freaking key or I call the cops. Me looks around. Do it. MF starts laughing. EM calls the cops. So we waited like 10 minutes for the car to arrive. The whole time she's demanding for the key and says her kid deserves the car more than I do, and the cops finally arrived. C1. What seems to be the problem here? Me. I. EM cuts me off. EM. Officer, this man is trying to steal my car. Arrest him. C1. OP, is this true? Me. No, officer. I show the key to the officer. EM. No, arrest him, officer. He's lying. C2. OP, do you have any proof of this? Me. Yes, officer. And I point at the Tesla. If you didn't know what a Tesla is, it's an electric car. It has self-driving mode and has cameras on every side of it so recorded everything that happens. C1 confused. Me. Tell him what a Tesla is. So we waited for the Tesla owner. While Karen is screaming the whole time, eventually the Tesla owner came and I asked him for the video. He was confused at first, but when he saw the Karen, he knows what I'm talking about, and he shows the video to the cop, and Karen's face goes white as the cop watches the video, and she got arrested for attempted theft. Also, the whole time her kid looked confused AF. Poor kid, and the cops left with the kid and Karen. What a legend. So me and my friend just drive home laughing. My friend said I never forget that day. I have no idea what happened to Karen next. And that brings us to the end. I think my life got saved by a Tesla. Every car should have a built-in camera like this. Also, I have no idea why the cop didn't check my license plate or any other stuff. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.